When all crimes are commercial, CFR 27, section 72.11, victim, uh, victimized by our so-called legal system. This was constructed in 2016, but has very poignant and relevant points, and I hope that it helps you and finds you in good spirit and good health. Have you or your family members been victimized by our so-called legal system? There is help, however, it will not come from an attorney at law, for they are the problem, <clears throat> not the solution. The Citizens' Rights Task Force is here to help. Why? Consider the following facts. According to the late Chief Justice William H. Uh, Rehnquist, 100% of the people that are in federal or state penitentiaries are there voluntarily. Don't believe it? We have some simple yes or no questions to prove how one is duped into forfeiting their right and trading, trading them for statutory privileges. An attorney at law is an arm of the state and their first duty is to the court, then the government, not you. Furthermore, whenever any duty to you interferes with their first duty, you are the one that it is, take, is to take back seat. Think you have an attorney uh, client privilege where what you say to an attorney at law remains private? Ever hear of discovery? This is where your attorney is ordered to turn over your information to the state that is attempting to incarcerate you. One in 32 Americans is either in prison or on parole or probation. Over 40% of the people admitted into prisons in America are convicted under the uh, political code and therefore by definition political prisoners furthermore since political prisoners end up with mandatory longer sentences the cumulative effect is that they end up being the majority of the population Americans incarceration <clears throat> rate is now 743 per 1,000 excuse me per 100,000 the highest in the world. American lockups more locks up more people for drug crimes than all of Europe locks up for all crimes combined. If you go to trial in federal court, there is a 96% chance of being convicted. Do you really believe that only 4% are innocent? It is the government's position that if you do not know your rights, then you do not have any. According to 27 CFR 7211, burglary, counterfeiting, forgery, kidnapping, larceny, robbery, illegal sale or possession of weapons, prostitution, extortion, swindling, and many, others, many other things like simple addiction to drugs or uh, marijuana use or considered and defined as commercial crimes where you are convicted uh, converted to an object for commercial use and due process of law becomes a farce. So what is the solution? Learn and exercise your rights. They are yours. Do you know, do you know them? We, here, we are here to help you. However, in the end, it is you who must stand up for your rights. Judge Alger Fee uh, stated in, it very clearly in the case of U.S. versus Johnson, 76 Fed SUPP 538 that your rights are neither ac accorded to the uh, passive resistance nor to the person indifferent thereto. Furthermore, Judge Fee stated that your rights cannot be claimed by attorney or solicitor and are only valid when insisted upon by the belligerent claimant in person. His final warning was clear that one who is uh, persuaded by honeyed words or moral uh, suasion to testify or produce documents simply loses the protection of your rights. 
What the Citizens Rights Task Force has to offer is not for the, the timid, but for the ones who is really is ready to stand up and fight for their rights. If you don't care about your rights, go get an attorney and go to jail. For a free catalog of educational materials explaining more about how, many, uh, how you can fight for your rights, send a blank email uh, with the words educational materials in subject line to Citizens Rights Task Force at yahoo.com and be prepared to be amazed. Commercial crimes. This is just a quick outline of research sites that I find while trying to understand commercial crimes as set out in 27 CFR 72.11 below in part. 72 CFR, excuse me, 27 CFR 72.11 purports to define some crimes as commercial crimes. Section 72.11 meaning, meaning of terms. As used in this part, unless the context otherwise requires, terms shall have the meaning ascribed in this section. Words in the uh, plural form shall include the singular and vice versa. And words import, importing to uh, masculine gender shall include the feminine. The terms included and including do not exclude things not uh, enumerated which are in the same general class. Commercial crimes, any of the following types of crimes, federal or state offenses, against the revenue laws, burglary, counterfeiting, forgery, kidnapping, larceny, robbery, illegal sale or possession of deadly weapons, prostitution, including soliciting, procuring, pandering, white slaving, keeping house of ill fame, and like offenses, extortion, swindling, and uh, confidence games, and attempting to commit, conspire, or commit, or compounding any of the foregoing crimes, addiction to narcotics, drugs, and the use of marijuana will be treated as if such were commercial crimes. I, searched, I researched the term commercial crime and found next to nothing in the legal resources available to me. Some of the information I found may not be exactly on point, but it does uh, raise reasonable questions. If maybe... <clears throat> We are all presumed by uh, silent judicial notice to be engaged in commerce and uh, tribal accordingly under uh, merchant law, commercial law. Perhaps the proper administrative forum to start an administrative complaint would be the successor to the Interstate Commerce Commission, ICC. Dear Government Alphabet Soup Agency, these, courts, uh, these court folks have the crazy idea that I am somehow involved in commerce. I don't know where they got that idea. I would like a determination of status or of activity from you. If we could get the Alphabet Soup Agency to make an administrative determination that for whatever reason it does not have jurisdiction because we are not engaged in commerce, then that should end the complaint by re removing it from the jurisdiction of a possible commer commerce court. One. Form a complication, a, a complication of the messages and papers of the president. Bureau of National uh, Literature, Incorporated, New York, 1911 through 1914, 1916, 1917, and volume uh, XIX, Encyclopedia Index, uh, Commerce Court. Commerce Court, the Man Elkskin. Act of June 18, 1910, created a new judicial body known to the Commerce Court to review the decisions of the Interstate Commerce Commission on appeal and to expedite rates, rate cases formally tied, tried in the United States Circuit Courts. It had the same jurisdiction as Circuit Courts in 1. All cases for the enforcement otherwise than by adjudication and collection of a forfeiture or penalties or by infliction of a criminal uh, punishment of any order of the Interstate Commerce Commission other than the payment of money. Two, cases brought to enjoin, uh, set aside, annual or suspended, or suspend in whole or part any order of the Interstate Commerce Commissions. Three, such cases by a Section 3 of the Act entitled an act to further regulate commerce with foregoing uh, excuse me, with foreign nations and along the states approved February 19, 1903, were authorized to maintain in a circuit court of the United States. Four, all such uh, mandamus proceedings as under the provisions of Section 
20 or section 23 of the act entitled an act to regulate commerce approved February 4th, mm -hmm. 1887 as amended. We're authorized to be, we're authorized to be maintained in the circuit court of the United States. The jurisdiction of the Commerce Court oversee, uh, over cases of the foregoing uh, nature was exclusive, but the act did not affect the jurisdiction previously proposed by any circuit or district court of the United States over cases or proceedings of any kind not lying within the above enumerated case uh, classes. The court was abolished October 22, 1913. Its jurisdiction transferred to the jurisdiction uh, excuse me, to the district court of the, its district court and its judges were retained as circuit judges. Commerce Court, C Courts, defendant, uh, defended, seven, 7755, establishment of recommended 7442, 2A from 15, Corpus Juris Secundum, 1115, 1995, Commerce, subsection 148.1, FN 59. Former statutes, commerce courts. One, under provisions of the Interstate Commerce Act, as amended by the Act of June 29, 1906, equitable jurisdiction to entertain, hearing, uh, entertain, hear, and determine suits to annual or to enjoin the enforcement of orders of the Interstate Commerce Commission was conferred on the then circuit courts of the United States, U.S. Southern R. Co. versus Tift. Uh, Georgia 27 S period CT period 709 comma 206 U dot S dot 428 51 L period ED period 1124 and 11 uh, and ANN dot CAS uh, CAS dot 846 2 this in, this jurisdiction was subsequently transferred to and in heard in the Commerce Court, while the act creating the court was in force, U.S. Interstate Commerce, Common versus uh, Baltimore, etc., R.co.com.ct.32.s.ct.742,225, uh, U.S. 326, 56L.ed, uh, 1107. Number three. The Commerce Court was abolished in 1913, and the powers of the Commerce Court were co uh, coffered on, this on the specially constituted district court. U.S. Brady v. Interstate Commerce Commission, DCWVA, 43 F2D 847, affirmed Brady v. U.S. 51 S.C.T. Uh, 559, 283 U.S. 804, 75 L period, ED period, 1424, Standard Oil Co. versus U.S. Uh, D.C. Uh, IND period, 41 F period, 2D, 836, Affirm Standard Oil Co. Uh, Indian versus U.S. 51 SC T 429, 283 U.S. I'm not going to read the rest of those. There's a long litany of these cases. Uh, from jo Digest United States Supreme Court reports five years uh, SUPP period 1918 through 1922 page 353 Interstate Commerce Commission the Interstate Commerce Commission Act of February 4 1887 stat uh, 24 stat at large 383 uh, chapter 104 comp uh, stat subsection 8576 4 fed stat uh, ANNO 2DED page 448 confers upon the commission powers of investigation in every broad language and the Supreme Court has refused by construction to limit it so far as the business of the carries the carriers is concerned and their relation to the public Smith versus Interstate Commerce Commission 245 US 3338 sub CT rep 30 62 L period ED 135 to see however from USCA popular name uh, table 2000 page 859 ICC termination act of 1995 public law 104-88 December 29 1995 109 stat 803 2 subsection 451 full colon 5 subsection uh, 
5314, 5315, 8332, note 5 APP subsection 8G, also 11 subsection 1162, 15 subsection 18, 21, 26, 1681 S, 1691 C, 1692 1, 5904, and 16 subsection 1247 1248 1261 1261 note 18 subsection 33 comma 921 comma 1992 comma uh, 6001 23 subsection 127 149 26 subsection 168 281 354 3231 7701 28 subsection 1336 1337, 1445, 2321, 2322, excuse me, 2323 and 2341, as well as 2342. Three, from Bouvier's Law Dictionary, Baldwin Students, ED, 1946, page 190. Commercial law, a phrase employed to denote those branches of the law which relate to the rights of property and relation of persons engaged in commerce. This term denotes more than the phrase uh, maritime law, which is sometimes used as synonymous, but which more strictly relates to shipping and it in incidents as the subjects with which commercial law, even as administered in any one uh, country, has to deal are disp dispersed throughout the globe. It results that commercial law is less local and more uh, cosmopolitan in the, its charters than any other great branch of municipal law, and the peculiar genius of the common law in adapting recognized principles of right to new and every uh, varying combination of facts, has here found a field where its excellence had been more clearly shown. The various systems of commercial law have been well constructed, well con contrasted by Lennon Levi, in his collection entitled Commercial Law, Its Principles and Ad Administration of the Merchantile Law of Great Britain compared with the codes and laws of commerce of all the important mercantile uh, countries of the modern world and with the institution of Justinian London, 1850 through 1852, a work of great interest both as a contribution to the, uh, pro to the project of the Merchantile Code and as a manual of uh, present use. As to the rule in the federal court, see 16 PET period 1, uh, ID 711, 107 U.S. 33, where Bradley uh, J. says, where the law has not been settled, it is the right and the duty of the federal courts to exercise their own judgment, as they also always do in reference to the doctrine of commercial law. See 12 Am uh, L period reg period N dot S dot 473 United States Courts 4 from 15 A Corpus Juris Secundum 2 1995 commercial. Commercial law, a phrase neither uh, scientific nor ac accurate, which is used to designate the whole body of substantive uh, jurisdiction ap applicable to the rights, intercourse, and relation of persons engaged in commerce, trade, or mercantile pursuits. That branch of the law, which relates to the rights of property and the relation of persons engaged in commerce, a law not peculiar to one state or dependent upon local authorities, but one arising out of the usage of the commercial world, although it has also been stated that there is no such thing as a general commercial law separate from the particular state or government whose authority makes its laws. It has also been described as a system of jurisprudence acknowledged by all maritime nations and as foreign commerce is carried out by means of shipping, the term has become that the term has come to be used occasionally as synonymous with maritime law, but in uh, strictness, the phrase commercial law is wider and includes many transactions or legal questions which have nothing to do with shipping or its incidents. Five, 
Former Bouvier's Law Dictionary, Baldwin Students Edition, 1946, page 756, Maritime Law, that system of law which particularly relates to the affairs and businesses of the sea, to ship, their crews, and navigation, and to the marine conveyance of person and property, whilst, or willest, the general maritime law is the basis uh, for the maritime law of the United States, as well as of other countries. It is only so far operative in this or any country as it is adopted by the laws and usage thereof. It has no inherent force of its own. 21 Wall 558 in particular matters, especially such as the approach a merely municipal uh, character. The received maritime law may differ in different uh, countries without affecting the integrity of the system as a harmonious whole. The general system of maritime law, which was familiar to the lawyers and the statesmen of this country when the Constitution was adopted, was intended and referred to when it was declared in this instrument that the judicial power of the United States shall extend to all cases of admiralty and maritime jurisdiction. This adopted, it became the maritime law of the United States, operating uniformly in the whole country. The question as to the true limits of maritime law and admiralty jurisdiction is exclusively a judicial question, and no state law or act of Congress can make it broader or narrower than the judicial power may determine those limits to be. But what the law is within those limits, assuming the general maritime law to be the basis of the system, depends on what has been received as law in the maritime usage of this country and on such legislation as many as may have been uh, competent to affect it. The law of limited liability was enacted by Congress as a part of the maritime law of the United States and in its operation extends whoever, wherever public navigation extends, 103 U.S. 527. The Act of Congress of 1886, subsection 4, extending the Limits Liability Act to vessels used on a river in inland navigation is a con constitutional and valid law. 141 U.S. 1, uh, 6, from 55 Corpus Juris Secundum, 710, 1995, Maritime, um, maritime Transactions, a transaction which is to be rendered or performed on a, the high seas or navigable waters, I believe that's a typo, navigable waters, or directly connected with uh, navigation or navigable waters. The term maritime transaction has been held under certain circumstances to be synonymous with commercial transactions. See 15 Corpus Juris Secundum, page 576, note 18, maritime transactions as subject to admiralty jurisdiction. See admiralty subsection 24, number 7. From 52A, uh, Corpus Juris Secundum, 743, 1995, law, mercantile law, commercial law, and law merchants. These terms are substantially equivalent, mercantile law being defined as the system of jurisprudence acknowledged or recognized by all commercial nations. This being particularly identical with one of the generally uh, accepted definitions of commercial law. See, corp see the Corpus Juris Secundum definition, commercial mercantile law, designated by the system of rules, customs, and uses generally recognized and adopted by merchants and traders, and which, either in its simplicity or its modified by common law or statutes, uh, constitutes the law of the regulations of their transactions and the solution of their controversies. For definitions and discussion concerning law of merchants, see Bills and Notes, subsection 2, 8A, from 207, or excuse me, from 27 Cal, Jur, 3D, Rev, Part 2, page 487, Documents of Title, subsection 6. Most footnotes omitted. Mm -hmm. State regulation law of merchants. Those provisions of the Uniform Commercial Code governing documents of titles are subject to any regulatory statutes of this state tariffs, classifications, or regulations filed or ensued pursuant thereto to the extent that they are applicable, UCC subsection 7103, as discussed elsewhere, the state is con 
constitutional, constitutionally empowered to regulate public and private carriers and certain uh, incidents of the carriage of the goods incident thereto, as well as those public warehouse regarded as public utilities. The principle of the law of equity, including the law of merchants and the law relative to capacity to contract, principles and agents, estoppel, fraud, misrepresentation, duress, coercion, mistakes, bankruptcies, or other validating or invalidating causes supplement the provisions of the Uniform Commercial Code unless displaced by its particular provisions, 8B from IBID, I-B-I-D, comma, page 486, subsection 5, most footnotes omitted. The provisions of the, uni the Uniform Commercial Code dealing with documents of title are subject to any treaty or statute of the United States, UCC 7103. Thus, where a document of title is involved in the interstate or inter international uh, shipment of goods or were the transaction or where the transaction is otherwise subject to the federal regulations, the right and liabilities of the parties must be governed by ap applicable federal statutes as interpreted by federal uh, tribunal. 8C from Western and uh, Cal uh, Com, C O M M, Code 2002, subsection 7103. To the extent that the, any treaty or statute of the United States, regulatory statute of this state, or tariffs, classifications, or regulations filed or issued pursuant thereto is applicable, the provisions of the, this division are subject thereto, 9A uh, from 48 Corpus Secundum 9, 1995, International Law, subsection 5, footnotes omitted. The body of the rule known now known as international law has been of slow growth and has particularly developed since the early days of the 16th century. The chief source of the international law are uh, customs and usage of civilized nations, treaties and other in interstate agreements. The decision of mm -hmm. international uh, tribunals and the decision of national tribunals, 9B from IBID, IBID, Subsection 3, footnotes omitted. International law is different from municipal law, which is the other branch of positive law and which governs the international affairs of the sovereign state. 9C from ID, subsection 2, footnotes omitted. International law applies on all the seas and costs of the uh, coasts of the world, and its settled principles should not be subverted by the uh, ex... Genesis, ex Genesis, perhaps uh, temporary of a single nation on a particular uh, coast. As to source international law has been divided into customary and conventional or diplomatic as to subject matter, international law is divided into public international law and private international law. The latter compromising that the body of jurisdiction now generally referred to by the name conflict of laws. Uh, 9D from ID, subsection 4, footnotes omitted. International law is a part of the law of the United States and as such is the law of all states of the Union. Nonetheless, uh, the rules of the international law are subject to express acts of Congress and the con uh, courts are bound to recognize applicable treaties, statutes, and constitutional provisions as superior to the canons of international law. The federal district courts are bound to apply provisions of acts of Congress, even if they are found to be in, inconsistent with the views of international law. Thus, international law does not affect the, a state in the, its reasonable regulation of conduct within its territorial limits. Bouvier's, Bouvier's Law Dictionary, Baldwin Student Edition, 1946, page 674, Law of Merchants, Law Merchant. The general body of commercial usage in the matter relating to commerce, Blackstone's calls at the custom of merchants and ranks it under the head of the particular customs of England, which go to make up the great body of the common law, one law, BLA, COM, 74, since, however, its character is not local, not, not its obligation confined to a particular district. It cannot be uh, proprietary, be considered as a custom in the technical sense. First Steph, S-T-E-P-H, COM 54, it is a system of law which does not rest 
exclusively on the uh, positive intuition and local customs of any particular country, but consist of certain principles of equity and usage of trade which general con conveyance and a common sense of justice have established to regulate the dealings of merchants and mariners in all the commercial countries of the civilized world, 3 Kent 2. These usages being general and extensive partake of the character of rules and principles of law, not of matters of fact, as do usages which are local or special. They constitute a part of the general law of the land, and being part of that mm -hmm. law, their existence cannot be proved by witnesses, but the judges are bound uh, to take notice of them ex officio. Winch 24, W-I-N-C-H 24. And this application is not confined to merchants, but extended, extends to all persons uh, concerned in any mercantile transaction. 11A from 15A Amjuris Prudent 2D 367 1998 Commerce, subsection 36. What constitutes subjects of commerce? Although generally speaking, anything that can be brought and s bought and sold is subject of commerce. Things which are injurious to the public lose the benefit of protection as articles of commerce, commerce and are within the uh, policy power, excuse me, police power of the state. 11B from ID 368 Commerce, subsection 36. Well, it has been said that, speaking generally, persons are not subject of commerce, New York versus Millen, 36 U.S. 1029 LED 648. The transportation of persons for immoral purposes has been held within the power of Congress to regulate under the Commerce Clause. 11C in New York uh, versus Malin, the Supreme Court of the United States held, but how, how can this apply to persons? They are not the subjects of commerce and not being imported goods, cannot fall within a train of reasoning founded upon the uh, construction of the, a power given to Congress to regulate commerce and the prohibition of the state from imposing a duty on imported goods. The objects of this clause, in all probability, was to enable the government of the United States to form an accurate estimate of the uh, increase of population by immigration. But whatsoever may have been its purpose, it is obvious that these laws only affect through the power of uh, navigation and passengers Wireless or Willis on their voyage, and until they shall have landed. After that, and when they have uh, ceased to have any connection with the ship, and when, therefore, they have ceased to be passengers, we are s satisfied that acts of Congress applying to them as such, and only professing to uh, legislate in relation to them as such, have then performed their office and can, with no uh, proprietary of language be said to come into conflict with the law of the state whose operation only begins when that of the laws of Congress ends whose operation is not even on the same subject because although the person on whom it operates is the same yet having ceased to be a passenger he no longer stands in in the only relation in which the law of Congress either professed or intended uh, to act upon him. New York versus Millen, 1837, 36 U.S. 102, 9 L. Period E.D. 648, 661 through 662, 11 D. From 15 A. Andrews Prudence, 2 D. 368 through 369, 1998. Commerce, subsection 36. In view of the Supreme Court's refusal to fix an arbitrary rule as to what constitutes commerce subject to the powers of Congress, it is not surprising that there are some inconsistencies in the cases dealing with the questions as to what constitutes the subject of commerce. Thus, there is a possible conflict between earlier cases holding certain matters not to be subject, uh, subjects of interstate commerce and latter cases holding relate, related matters to be subject of interstate commerce, although the earlier cases have not necessarily been specifically overruled. For example, while it was formally held that insurance transactions when carried on across state lines did not constitute interstate commerce, a later decision held that the business of insurance when trans, uh, transacted between insurers and an insured 
in different states did constitute interstate commerce. Think. Here's something to really make you think about what the IRS does with, the, with its criminal statutes. I'm going to give you two examples that prove that the IRS has not a leg to stand on in a court if you properly bring forth what I am about to show you. You have to remember that, that a penalty statute cannot be applied unless you violate another statute that specifically states that penalty statute. Example number one. Title 18, USC, Section 842. This section starts out with A. It shall be unlawful for any person. It is so long that you have to read it for yourself, as it is four columns in Title 18. However, I will quote Title 18, USC, uh, 844, which states, Penalties. A. Any person who violates subsection A through I uh, of Section 8. 42 of this chapter shall be fined not more than 10,000 or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both. B. Any person who violates any other provision of Section 842 of this chapter shall be fined not more than $1,000 uh, or imprisoned not more than one year or both. It continues on for three more columns. Here is, a, here is the statute that you must violate laid out in the penalty statute describing the statute you must violate. Does any of the other penalty statutes in Title 26 uh, come even close to this? Yes, and I will provide it for you. Example number two, Chapter 72, Licensing and Registration. Section 7001A, all persons undertaking as a matter of business or for profit the collection of a foreign payment of interest or dividends uh, by means of coupons, checks, or bills of exchange shall obtain a license from the Secretary and shall be subject to the regulations enabling the government to obtain information required under Subtitle A relating to income taxes, as the Secretary shall prescribe. B. Penalty for failure to obtain license for penalty for failure to obtain lic the license as provided for in this section, C. Section 7231. Wow. What an admission that the regulations must be presented that must be present that enables the government to do what they are, have have to do. Not only that, I ask the question: What is a bill of exchange? The Federal Reserve note is a bill of exchange in co commercial law, and you can find it uh, a multitude of books of commercial law on this subject, proving it to be so. Now, Section twenty-seven or seventy-two thirty-one is in chapter 75 crimes and forfeitures so knowing that the statute you violated has no penalties it tells you to see section 7231 does 26 usc 6001 comma 6011 uh, 6012 have these words directing you to the penalty statutes no so there is uh 7231 section 7231 failure to obtain license for collection of foreign foreign items, any person required by Section 7001 relating to collection of certain foreign items to obtain a license who <clears throat> knowingly undertakes to collect the payment described in Section 7001 without having obtained the license, therefore, or with, without complying with the regulations prescribed under Section 7001, shall be guilty of a misdemeanor and upon conviction, therefore, shall be fined not more than 5000 or imprisoned not more than one year or both. I emphasize regulations because that is what is needed. So looking at the uh, parallel table of authorities, we see the following. Title 26 USC compared to CFR. Subsection 60, uh, Title 26 USC, uh, subsection 6901 in comparison with 27 part 70 of the CFR. Title 26 U.S.C. 7011, subsection 7011, in comparison with CFR 27 parts 19, 22, 25, 70, 19, uh, excuse me, 194, 270, 285, and 290. 26, Title 26 U.S.C. 7025, in comparison with CFR 27 part 197. There is no statute 7001, nor a regulation Yet the statute specifically states a regulation shall be promulgated. Why doesn't 6001, 6011, and 6012 say there must be a promulgated uh, regulation like the above statute? 
If the prosecution would bring forth the regulation when demanded, what would it show? Would it show that there is none? Would it show that if it was, it was sandwiched between a BATF Title 27 statute? With the simple asking of the court that the prosecutor must produce the regulation and destroy the case against you because under the uh, statute 6301, 6331, through 6343, and 6651, and all the penalty statutes in the 7000 series section are all AFT Title 27 CFR regs as listed in the LSA and the peril table of authorities. Remember, this is to make you think, not make, not, not me, because I already know the answer. Notice all, all seem to be connected to commercial activities of a specific nature. So I leave you with this section of subpart B, definitions, section 72.11. Commercial crimes, any of the following types of, of crimes, federal or state offenses against the revenue laws, burglary, counterfeiting, forgery, kidnapping, and the use of marijuana will be treated as if s such were commercial crimes. Notice how nicely revenue laws is defined as a commercial crime. Do you have a, a contract or a license such as a state at such as stated in 7001 to be charged with an income tax crime in chapter 75? Is that ever brought up in a tax case? This will definitely make you think, I hope. And with that, I bear to you, good day.